Hi there, this is Mark Killian. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This episode, we're going to be dealing with soundtracks. Um, how do you get a soundtrack prepared and out the door? You might say, hey, well, that sounds simple. You put a bunch of cues together and, well, not quite, um, although the concept is really that simple. The first part is, is actually dealing with the business side of it, right? Most of the time, the score that you've just written for a movie is going to be owned, well, at least the mechanical rights. <laughs> And so the mechanical rights are going to be owned and the masters are going to be owned by the producers or the film company. And so you don't have the right um, to release a soundtrack without, without their permission. Um, and they are usually not motivated to do that because uh, there's no money, there's no, there's no big business in, in soundtracks. Um, and so you kind of have to do the grunt work. You're the one who's going to have to convince them that, hey, it's good for the film too, let's do a soundtrack. You know, um, usually you can get it to coincide with the release of the film. It helps a little bit with the promo, but it certainly does help you as a composer. As a composer, it's a great tool to have. So in order to show you this process, I'm going to um, be putting together a soundtrack for a film that I've just finished called Official Secrets. And then I'm going to send the soundtrack to the producers, <clears throat> the people who own the rights, and say, hey, you know, this would be a good thing for all of us. Let's move on it. And then they may say, okay, great, you go and send this to your people that you've worked with in the past. I've worked with a handful of soundtrack companies and let's see what comes back. Um, or they may say, you know, we always like to work with that company or, um, you know, we'd prefer, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. Just, you just want to get it out there. Like I say, you're never going to make any money from it unless it's a massive hit. I did a movie called Pitch Perfect with uh, Chris Beck, um, which did a quite, quite okay on the soundtrack sale side of it. Um, and over the years, if I've seen more than a couple of hundred bucks, I'd be surprised. It really, it really is quite shocking how little money there is in, in, in this stuff these days. But anyway, that's not why we do it. Okay, so let's get started. Firstly, I do this in iTunes, begrudgingly. iTunes is a dog of a program, uh, but it does do everything I need, albeit with some difficulty and frustration. The way I start though, before I even get it into iTunes, is I will go and master all the stuff. I will do a temporary mastering job in each and every cue that I think I may want on the soundtrack. I have done another episode about that, a full episode on mastering for a soundtrack. So I advise you to go and check that out. Um, it is a temporary thing. The reason is when we write music for, for movies, um, you're writing music under a, a, a love scene, um, the dialogue's very soft, there's kissing, there's kind of whatever is going on there, but you're basically going to be writing the music quite soft. And we as composers generally like, and I'll probably be mentioning this in another episode, or it might even be the subject of another episode, is great gain structure. Very important thing for us, because we're, we're always mixing with dialogue. We're always listening to stuff with dialogue. When we have directors in here presenting, the dialogue's, of course, very important. And so you want to always keep your gain structure in your studio at every level, as um, consistent as possible. And so you will find um, that your score at the end, when you are listening back to all this stuff, you're gonna have cues that are really soft, you're gonna have some cues that are really light, chase scenes where there's tire screeches and gunshots and all sorts of crap going on. You're gonna generally be writing your music and it'll get end, end up getting printed in your mixes a lot louder. So what you wanna do is you wanna compensate for that. You wanna sort of level that playing field. That's why I master. So I master it to the best of my ability. Now I'm not a mastering engineer's left arsehole, but I, I just do it so that when I'm listening and, and, and going through this, I have a, a better representation of how it's gonna sound in the end. And uh, also not to mention sending it to soundtrack companies, trying to sell your, your soundtrack to them so that they will release it. You know, you wanna put your best foot forward, you want it to sound the best you can. Um, of course, I turn off all that mastering before I eventually turn it over to whichever soundtrack company is going to take it because they will have their own mastering people, um, real proper mastering engineers who know what they're doing, hopefully. Okay, so once you're done with your temporary mastering job, you pop all these things, you make a new playlist in iTunes, you pop all these things in there. Then you're going to, there are two columns that you're going to want to reference. So go and grab those columns, make sure they're visible, and then move them over. To where you can see them. One is the ratings column, one is the comments column. Um, you are going to rate 
each and every track on your potential soundtrack. Now, in this case, I think I have 25 in there. You'll see in a minute. Probably would have led down to 20 or something in the end. Um, so everything from one star to five stars. So the tracks that you really like that are like, that's a definite track on the soundtrack, get a five star. Those that are like, I don't know if this should be on the soundtrack, might get a one star. Also in the comments, you're gonna write information about each and every cue, which will help you when you're just looking at a list of 25 cues to know kind of what that cue is doing without even having to play it, because it'll save you a lot of time. You know, this process, building, uh, doing a soundtrack, uh, I, I, it's generally something I do at night after I've finished work in the studio during the day. I will sit outside and um, spend hours on a headphone, and it, it'll take me a good five, six nights, sometimes more, sometimes a little less, of time uh, doing this. So it's time intensive. So, you know, you want to get this process as, as uh, time efficient as possible. Um, so in the comments, I'll be putting the key, you know, are there drums, are there strings, are there the ducks or the whatever is vocals so that at a glance I can say okay yeah I think I know what that cue is okay so now you, as you see in the comments and you can't type directly in there you have to command I bring up the info window uh, and you can type in the little comments window what I'm looking for is just key the key it starts out at if it changes key I may put that in I may not it doesn't really matter I want to know what key it starts out at I want to know what the main ingredients of the track are, in this case, strings. Um, there's some pads in here that are, that are going to come in. Um, and I also want to name um, if there are any main themes, like, you know, is this the chase theme or the you know, love theme or, or whatever. And, and of course, as I said, the instruments. Um, so let's pop pads in there. And coming up in this queue, you're gonna be hearing in a second here some, some synth ops, um, arpeggios coming in here. We're still in C minor, so. Yeah, so let's put in there synth ops. And I think that's enough for now. Um, and now we're gonna go through and get everything else up to that point where I've got comments in every track. The reason I do this is because I just can't remember every single track um, so by name. So um, it's good to have the comment window. It also helps to structure the soundtrack. Um, what you don't want to have is a situation where you've got like keys coming one after another. You want to kind, kind of mix your keys up because it can get a little monotonous and tedious. If you sort it by name, no matter what you do here, pull something down, it's not going to change anything because it's sorting this list by name. If you sort it by rating, um, that can be very helpful too. And I've done that often. I use that often to stack the tracks, as, as you'll see a little bit later. Um, but of course, you can't move it. Once you move anything here, it's um, not going to move anything because you're sorted by rating. What you need to do is sort it by the very left column where you see the numbers um, of the tracks there. Um, and once you sort it by that, now you're free to move anything around you want anywhere you like, irrespective of its rating or its name or whatever. Very important that you do that before you get started. Um, right now, I'm taking all my five star ratings, putting them together, all the four star ratings, putting them together, um, and so on. Now, the other important, and what I find the most difficult thing about putting a soundtrack together is finding the first track. Um, unless it's a movie that has a big main theme, main title theme with all the big thematic stuff in there and big pounding this and that, and it's super exciting, that's, that's kind of a no-brainer to put as a first track. Most soundtracks these days don't have that um, because, you know, that's kind of a thing of the past. So I'm looking for a good first track. There we go, I mean, that's got a nice energy, but this is kind of a chase cue, doesn't really help. It's not terribly thematic. Um, the next cue here, I see it's in C sharp minor two. Um, C sharp man, yeah, what does that mean? Um, 
This could be a good cue for a first cue. It's um, sort of got that ex expecting feeling about it. Not quite sure where it's going to go, what it's going to say. The good opener keeps you wanting to listen for more. As you can see what I've named here, C sharp minor. There's strings, obviously. You hear a deduct there. Um, you can see it goes to C minor. There's a key change, which I've noted in the comments. Um, there's some low perk stuff coming up. And now I'm just flitting through. Seeing where this goes. You know, obviously, if you spend... If you're trying to build a soundtrack and you're listening to every cue all the time, all the way through, this is going to take you weeks. Um, takes long enough already, so you'll find yourself skipping through the tracks all the time. You know, by the time you're doing a soundtrack, you're so familiar with this music because you've probably just finished scoring it. You're probably sick and tired of hearing it all anyway. I am at, at this point. So I'm flitting through to see where the tracks go. And also I'm teaching myself what each track is doing. It just makes it, the, the more I'm familiar with these tracks, the quicker this process goes. Now this is an interesting track. It's not a good candidate for first track though, I don't think. It's got a sound of a track that is going from one thing to another. It's not something that has that expecting starting out vibe. Like the Let's Ask for the Documents track does. Okay, now we're in C minor. It's a good potential first track too. I mean, sorry, did I say C minor? I meant F minor. So this is a good potential first track. Let's pop it up there in second place just for now. Um, or oh, okay, yeah, let's put it up in first place. Ask for the document second, maybe. Could work. Yeah, I'm going to check out where this goes, what it does. Yeah, it's too. I think Let's Ask for the Documents is better. It's, it sounds a little more like a first track. Whereas I did it, I mean, even though Let's Ask for the Documents comes at the end of the movie, of the movie to, towards the end of the movie, you know, most of the time you're sequencing the soundtrack not in the running order of the movie. Some people like to do that, and for some movies it makes sense. For Eye in the Sky, um, directed by this, the, the same director as this one, Official Secrets, um, we elected to do that. It sort of made sense, I guess, but that's, I think, the only time I've ever done that in to be honest, not a big fan. Um, it, it can be good for the listening experience, but the truth is, these days, I don't know if many people sit and listen to an entire soundtrack, track to track. Um, I certainly don't. So most people are just, you know, scanning through on Spotify. So build your soundtrack for that, you know. Um, so I'm pretty happy about. Um, oh, by the way. You want to have um, crossfade songs unchecked. You want to be sure about that and have your sound check unchecked. Make sure you don't have any EQ on this thing. So even though this, I did a track has to duck in it, as does the first track. It's not necessarily a problem, but let's see, this removing header track might be a better candidate. Yeah, we're ending in C minor here. The other thing is C minor going to F minor is not that far off, where C minor going to A minor is, is more of a change. Sounds pretty good. 
Uh, here you have something that's a bit less thematic. Just sort of one idea that grows. It's got doesn't sound that great. So let's move that down. March to War might be better. Coming out of a So that's pretty good, <clears throat> that transition. Uh, we got Duduk here too. Uh, we got synth pulses. Uh, so they're quite similar in some ways. Just adjusting there, I forgot to put Duduk in that comment. So there's a lot of Duduk here in these opening tracks. <clears throat> in fact, all of them, except for they took him, have Duduk. But yeah, a lot of stuff I do has to do. And now again, uh, looking in here at the four stars, Ed reaches Koza. Kind of a nice cue, very similar though to March to War, even though it's in a different key. Oh yeah, this cue I'm going to mark as a five star. This is a, it's very different to, well, I mean, it's got to duck and all that, but it's, it has no synth pulses or anything like that. It's, uh, this, uh, I recorded, I think I did it free time. Not sure if we ended up using the free time version, but, um, it's basically just orchestra and to duck. Um, so that's definitely an option here to break up this monotony that we're getting with C minor, F minor, and a lot of duk du duk and, and synth pulses. So, plus being one of my favorite tracks, we should have it somewhere up in the front. It's definitely not a good first track cue, but that sounds very good coming after there, coming after March to War. Okay, so I'm going back and forth here, and you know, things will change. Uh, putting the soundtrack album together is it's a push and pull and there are a lot of different things in place and you change one thing you might change the other so i'm going to skip forward now um and basically i'm just trying to sort the the four stars out trying to sort the three stars out and i'll go down and you know ultimately what i'm looking for is a soundtrack that starts from my favorite tracks and ends with my least favorite tracks okay so that's it for this episode of making a soundtrack. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Please feel free to leave comments or suggestions below. Um, I am always very open to hearing what you guys have to say, even if there's something I'm doing that's stupid or daft or there's a better way to do it, please let me know. We're always learning. Um, so hope to see you on the next episode and hasta luego. <laughs>